On our focal point segment this week, we shall dive deeper into the swollen shoot virus and its impact on the livelihoods of cocoa farmers as well as its impact on Ghana's cocoa production. We spoke to some farmers at Isikasu in the eastern region who have had their farms affected by the swollen shoot virus. Our focal point segment comes up next. Imagine walking through a cocoa farm in Ghana where the scent of fertile soil mingles with the sight of infected cocoa trees. The cocoa swollen shoot virus disease transmitted by mealybugs has plagued this land since its identification in the 1930s. This insidious virus causes cocoa shoots to swell, leaves to yellow and trees to wither devastating livelihoods and disrupting Ghana's cocoa-driven economy. Ghana, the world's second largest cocoa producer, supplies about 20% of global cocoa. However, the swollen shoot virus has led to a significant decrease in cocoa yields, affecting approximately 315,000 hectares of cocoa farms by 2019. Experts contribute approximately $2 billion annually to Ghana's economy. The repercussions of reduced cocoa production in Ghana ripple through global chocolate markets. Higher cocoa prices stemming from supply shortages in major producing countries like Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire affect global chocolate manufacturers and consumers alike. Ghana's cocoa exports are a critical component of its foreign exchange earnings, underpinning economic stability and development efforts. According to a Reuters report, Ghana, the world's second largest cocoa producer, is looking to delay the delivery of up to 350,000 tons of cocoa beans to the next season due to poor crops exacerbating the challenges faced by the global chocolate industry. The swollen shoot virus, along with adverse weather, bean disease and illegal gold mining, has severely impacted Ghana's cocoa production. The virus is spread across West African cocoa-producing nations, including Côte d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Togo and Sierra Leone, exacerbates economic challenges regionally. These countries, similarly reliant on cocoa as a key economic driver, face income reductions, export revenue losses due to diminished cocoa yields. The economic strain underscores the need for coordinated regional responses and international support to mitigate losses and ensure sustainable cocoa production. Welcome to Isikasu Odumase, a village in Ghana's eastern region known for cocoa farming a tradition passed down through generations. But here, farmers face a serious threat. The cocoa swollen shoot virus disease, which is causing challenges for their crops and livelihoods. So this is a cocoa tree that has been affected by the swollen shoot virus. The shoots are swollen, leaves are turning yellow and growth has been stunted. Now, once the tree gets sick, farmers have to cut down the entire tree to prevent it from spreading to other trees. Taking a look at this space next to me, there were a lot of cocoa trees that had been planted in this area, but they had been infected. So farmers cut the trees down to prevent the swollen shoot virus from spreading further. And sometimes, like in the case of this particular farm, it's simply too late. The virus spreads quickly across the farm. Farmers are left with no choice but to cut down all cocoa trees. It's a devastating situation for farmers, wiping out their entire source of income and the hearts of their community's economy. This farmer cut down all affected cocoa trees and planted maize in its place. Solomon Kofi Tano is a young cocoa farmer with seven years of experience. Cocoa farming has been crucial for Solomon 
helping him support his siblings' education and vocational training. However, his farm has been hit hard by the swollen shoot virus outbreak. Previously, Solomon could harvest good yields, but now his output has drastically decreased. Despite Cocoa Board officials inspecting his farm and acknowledging the virus threat to neighboring farms, their promised intervention hasn't happened. It's been almost two years and the virus keeps spreading, making it hard for Solomon to manage his farm. He's feeling desperate and disheartened. Solomon is calling on Cocoa Board to fulfill their promise as his passion for cocoa farming fades amidst ongoing challenges. I have been doing cocoa farming for seven years. Cocoa farming has helped me in many ways. Some of my siblings are in school and others are learning a trade. I use the proceeds from my farm to support them. However, after my farm got infected with the swollen shoot virus, things have become challenging. In the past, I was able to harvest a lot of cocoa and use the proceeds to support my siblings. But now the yields have drastically reduced. Cocoa board officials came to inspect the farm to see the extent of the infection. They explained that the infection can easily spread to neighboring farms. They promise to come back and cut down the trees, treat the land, and replant. But it's been almost two years and they haven't returned. The swollen shoot virus keeps spreading and I'm no longer able to prune and maintain the farm. I am pleading with Cocoa Board officials to return and treat my farm. I love cocoa farming, but I'm losing interest because of the current situation. Imano Nojo, a seasoned cocoa farmer with two decades of experience, has weathered many challenges at Isikasu Odumase. The swollen shoot virus, an enduring issue in the region, has posed unprecedented threats to his livelihood in recent years. The virus has significantly impacted his cocoa farm, causing visible signs of decay and reducing his once thriving yields. Emmanuel continues to face uncertain prospects for his farm's future amidst ongoing challenges. How has the, the, the swollen shoot virus affected your cocoa farm? The cocoa farm is large. If the swollen shoot virus affects one area and you don't cut it off, it will spread to the entire farm. I had to cut about two acres of the infected section. I wanted to replant cocoa, but due to the high infection rate, I couldn't. Because of this virus, I am no longer interested in planting cocoa. If they say a tree has been infected, cocoa tree has been infected by the swollen shoot virus, what are some of the signs that you see on the tree? First sign, back when I might tell you in terms of say. One of the first signs that help us detect the virus early is when the middle part of the shoot gets swollen while the top and bottom parts remain thin. It becomes tricky when it affects the leaves. Without much knowledge, it's difficult to detect it early. The leaves start to yellow or whiten. The also becomes smooth like an orange, instead of its typical textured appearance. It's hard to detect in the roots, but once you approach an infected tree, you will see that the roots are swollen. Sometimes you can harvest for a while, but since there is no cure, eventually the tree dies. Once you identify that a tree has been infected with the swollen shoot virus. What is the next step that you take as a farmer? 
From the education we received, we learned that once the virus affects one tree, you should cut down that particular tree to save the others from getting infected. Sometimes the infection is found across the farm, indicating that the virus has spread extensively. In such cases, you need to cut down the entire cocoa farm. Have you uh, changed how you farm to protect cocoa trees from the virus? Traditionally, we pick seedlings from other farms and plant them. So if the farmer picks an infected seedling and plants it, the infection spreads. This is typically how the swollen shoot virus spreads from farm to farm. Access to cocoa bot seedlings has also become an issue. Education will help a lot. It would be advisable to have seedlings easily accessible. How has the virus affected your income from cocoa farming? On a good day, you should be able to get about 10 bucks in a session. But currently, due to the swollen shoot virus, my yields are about 5 bucks. With the infected portion that I've cut off, there will be no yield coming from there. The virus significantly affects the yield. From your point of view, as a cocoa farmer at Isikasu, once um, a farm gets infected with the, um, the swollen shoot virus, how does Ghana Cocoa Board reach out and what level of support do they give farmers who have had their farms infected with the swollen shoot virus? Uh, Officials from Ghana Cocoa Board came around, but their response was slow. My farm got infected a while ago. I've reached out to them, but since they were not coming, I had to cut down the infected portion myself. It's been a while since they provided us with any education. I don't know if it's due to a lack of personnel or funding that causes these delays. With you being a cocoa farmer, I know that you know several farms that have been infected with the swollen shoes virus that have received some form of assistance on the farms. What does a typical treatment look like if Cocoa Board visits a typical farm that has been infected with the swollen shoes virus? What are some of the things that they do um, on the farm and do for the farmer too? Cocoa Board has programs in place to help us. They've sat down with us to explain these programs. They visit infected farms, cut down the infected trees, and provide some financial support to sustain us while our farms are being treated. They also plant plantains on the land after treatment, which really helps. However, their response is often very slow. It is difficult for farmers to treat their farms on their own because Cocoa Board has a special solution they use for treatment. If the farms are not treated properly, you can't replant because the soil will remain infected. Looking at cocoa farming at Isikasu and some of the challenges that you're facing, that includes the, the swollen shoot virus. How would you say that cocoa farming looks in the next five years? It is difficult for farmers as we get little help from the authorities. The cocoa sector has been neglected, yet we say cocoa is the backbone of the economy. We need a lot of support from the authorities. If the youth see how little support cocoa farmers receive, they won't find cocoa farming attractive. The money in it is also not lucrative.
was all Marco Coo, she can a cocoa craft when you see car, a best one. I send a bear, what we need cry out to me, the Usica, it to me share a fumo. Cocoa farmers need to earn enough to invest more in their farms. Every aspect of cocoa farm requires money. The scanner or move at the man, or move his head, the ice so or move by in we plead that revenue from cocoa be increased. In response to this crisis, the Ghana Cocoa Board has launched the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program. This program's strategies include the cutting out and replanting of infected cocoa trees with over 500,000 hectares targeted for replanting. The initiative aims not only to restore cocoa production, but also ensure economic stability for affected farmers. To further support farmers, Cocoa Board increased its initial treatment grant from 552.96 CDs per hectare to 1,000 CDs per hectare. This increase is intended to help farmers manage the disease and maintain their livelihoods. However, despite these efforts, not all farmers or farms are receiving prompt responses due to the rapid spread of the virus and the vast areas affected. Limited resources and logistical challenges also hinder Cocoa Board's ability to cover all regions effectively. Scientific research into disease-resistant cocoa varieties and pest management strategies is pivotal in mitigating the virus's economic impact. Institutions like the Cocoa Research Institute have been at the forefront of this research, developing hybrid cocoa plants that show resistance to the cocoa swollen shoot virus disease. These efforts are critical for sustainable cocoa production and economic resilience in Ghana and other affected regions. The plight of cocoa farmers in Isikasu Odumase serves as a poignant case study reflecting broader challenges facing Ghana's cocoa industry. The cocoa swollen shoot virus disease has not only ravaged local farms but also cast a shadow over the nation's status as the world's second largest cocoa producer. With approximately 20% of global cocoa supplied by Ghana, the impact of reduced yields due to the cocoa swollen shoot virus extends far beyond local communities, resonating in global chocolate markets. Efforts by the Ghana Cocoa Board to mitigate these challenges through the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program illustrates a proactive approach. Despite these initiatives, logistical constraints and the relentless spread of the virus continue to hinder progress, leaving farmers like Solomon Kofi Tano and Imano Nojo in precarious positions. To address these systematic issues, sustained investment in research for disease-resistant cocoa varieties and enhanced agricultural practices is imperative. Additionally, strengthening support systems for affected farmers and ensuring equitable access to resources are crucial steps towards safeguarding Ghana's cocoa industry's future. By confronting these challenges head-on and fostering collaborative efforts across sectors, Ghana can fortify its position as a global cocoa leader while ensuring the resilience and prosperity of its cocoa farming communities.